Okay, let's take a look at upgrading PKS. Uh, the steps that we're going to show here have uh, time lapse applied in a couple of spots just to speed up the recording, but we haven't omitted any of the steps that you'll take. First thing we'll do is look at our current PKS version, which is 1.2.6 build 2. And then we'll go over to PivNet and we're going to download the latest release, which is 1.3.0. We can see the PKS tile that needs to be downloaded. And we'll also need two CLI tools, the Kube CTL and the PKS CLI that are specific to this release. Once we've downloaded those files, we'll move on and look at the abbreviated release notes as well as locate a stem cell file that we'll also download. And a stem cell is really just a VM template that's specific to your underlying IS. So PKS can be used with many different IS platforms, Azure, AWS, GCP, vSphere. In our case, we're using vSphere, so we would download the vSphere-specific stem cell. And it's an important uh, concept to understand that the stem cell defines both the underlying operating system that Kubernetes runs on, as well as the Kubernetes release. When we do an upgrade, we are going to be upgrading not only Kubernetes, but the underlying OS. And that's important because there may be, have been a CVE for the OS and or for PKS or Kubernetes. So by updating all three components at the same time, we address all possible CVs. So if we scroll down, we'll take a look at the abbreviated release notes. And at the bottom of the scroll, we can go to the full release notes. There's a link. But what we want to look here is for the stem cell. And you see the stem cell for uh, PCF, or PKS in this case, is 170.15. That's the stem cell we're going to need to update to. So as we're importing the tile, I will go ahead and download that stem cell, and then we'll show you how to apply that. Okay, so we'll go back to OpsMan, we'll import a product. And we're going to select the PKS 1.3.0 tile that we downloaded. And once that's imported, we click on the plus symbol and we add it to our installation dashboard. And as you can see here, it's missing the stem cell that we discussed. So we'll go ahead and click on missing stem cell. And then we'll click on import stem cell. Once we've clicked on import stem cell, we select the appropriate file, click open, and now we need to apply it to the PKS product. We apply, and at this point, we're really ready to go uh, with our upgrade. Uh, that's all the pre-work that's required. If we go to our installation dashboard, we could do review pending changes and then apply. But before we click on apply, I want to take a look at the current version of Kubernetes that we're running. So if we submit a kubectl git nodes, we'll see that we're on 1.11.6. That's the release for 1.2.6 PKS. And we'll go ahead and click on Apply Changes. Now, this is where the majority of the time lapse is going to occur in this recording. In my lab, it took approximately an hour and a half for this to complete. Uh, it could take far less or far more in your environment, depending on the resources you have and the number of clusters that you are upgrading. Okay, so we get Changes Applied. Your Changes Were Successfully Applied message. That's what we like to see. We can go ahead and close this. If we want, we can kind of scroll through the verbose output and get a sense for what happened along the way. But as long as you're successfully applied, uh, you're good to go at this point. And if we click on the installation dashboard, we'll see that we are now green tile 1.3.0. And that's it. That's all there is to upgrading PKS. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Kubernetes clusters now and see which version we're running on. As you can see, 1.12.4. So we went from 116 to 1124. In my mind, this is really the easiest way on the market today or available to address the challenges of upgrading your PKS, or I'm sorry, your Kubernetes clusters in production. You think about all the steps that are required to validate and test the operating system, the settings, the Kubernetes release itself, and then in combination together, 
then applying it to your production workloads. All of that work is done for you and it's completely automated. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope it was useful.